In this video, we will look at how the PAP's policies can crash the Singapore economy. In a true free market economy where there is equilibrium, when there is higher productivity, wages will increase. This will lead to higher prices, but because of higher productivity, prices will also drop, which means that prices will not increase as fast as wages do. Purchasing power will also increase because of higher wages. You will get an economy that is in equilibrium and which will flow by itself. And companies will be able to charge a price that consumers will be willing to spend and earn profits. Well, but of course, a free market economy in reality doesn't happen, but we should at least expect that the government doesn't overregulate the market. Now, what is worse is if a government directly intervenes in the economy so as to earn profits. And this is where the PAP comes in because it is interested in the business of making profits. So what the PAP has done is it has owned businesses so that it can increase prices and increase profits for itself. Indeed, if you look at the Tomasic Holdings, the Tomasic Holdings also owns financial services in Singapore, such as DBS. It also owns telecommunications, such as Singtel, Singapore Technologies Telemedia, which owns Starhub and Medicorp, as well as transportation, such as SMRT, and real estate, such as Capital Land, Maple Tree, and Sabana. Now, as you can see, the PAP owns the essential services in Singapore, such as telecommunications, transportations, and real estate, which means that the PAP effectively monopolizes essential services in Singapore and gets to decide how much price to charge for essential services that Singaporeans need to use. As such, it is easy for the PAP to increase prices at their whims and fancies. For example, for the subscription for the FIFA World Cup, prices have increased 600% since 2006. Previously, it was even free. Now, if you compare Singapore with the other countries, Singaporeans have to pay more than $100 to watch the FIFA World Cup. Whereas, even in Japan, South Korea and Australia, it is free. And in the other developing countries, it is free as well. Only Hong Kong and Malaysia charges subscription for the FIFA World Cup. And even then, it is less than half of what Singapore charges. Well, so what does this all mean for Singtel? Now, if you look at Singtel's profits before 2003, it would average below $2 billion. However, from 2004 onwards, the profits shot up all the way to nearly $5 billion and has maintained at that high level ever since. Now note that Singtel is only one example of the companies that the PAP owns. As we have said, the PAP owns essential services in Singapore such as telecommunications, transport, public utilities, real estate, among others. So what this means is that the PAP gets to decide how much prices to charge. Well, there's really no one to stop them, is there? Well, they can choose not to travel on the SBS Transit or SMRT, but the PAP has made it not a choice for you because they have taken the other transport operators out of the system. Similarly, you can choose not to use Singtel, Starhub or M1, but who else can you use if you want to communicate with other people? So because of the PAP's direct intervention in the economy, because of their fixation on increasing prices so that they can increase profits, what this means is that the equilibrium cycle is disrupted. Because of the higher prices, purchasing power falls, because of the lower purchasing power, this affects productivity, which affects wages, and which affects Singaporeans' ability to consume. Because of the PAP's fixation on prices, it has created an uneven economy. Now, the PAP's fixation on profits doesn't rely only on them owning businesses. What the PAP has done is to also increase rents so as to increase profits. And how they have done it is to own real estate companies which increase these rents, and the profits thus gets channeled back to the PAP. And again, what is the next effect of this? The wages of Singaporeans get depressed. Now indeed, if you look at the price index of industrial properties, it has risen by 27.2% in 2011 and 25.8% in 2012, or more than 50% over the past two years. Not only that, the PAP opened the floodgates and imported cheap labour. Migrant workers are given very low wages, and the effect is that this depresses the wages of Singaporeans as well. Next, the PAP has also implemented foreign worker levies. Based on what the PAP says, the foreign worker levies are meant to control the number of foreign workers in Singapore. However, the foreign worker levies represent additional costs for employers, which means that they have to further 
depress the wages of migrant workers and depress the wages of Singaporeans. Now, so the PAP might say that foreign worker levies are to control the foreign worker population. But if you look at the foreign workforce numbers, from 2007 to 2013, the foreign worker population has only been increasing unabated. Now, more importantly, if you look at how much the PAP has collected in foreign worker levies, in 2010, the PAP has collected $1.9 billion. In 2011, the PAP has collected $2.5 billion. It is estimated that last year, the PAP would have collected $3 billion. So in truth, are the foreign worker levies meant to control the foreign worker population, or are the foreign worker levies meant to increase the profits for the PAP? So the PAP might have also introduced the fair consideration framework. But as we've explained, all companies need to do is advertise jobs for Singaporeans on the Jobs Bank website for 14 days. However, companies do not need to interview Singaporeans first. Companies do not need to hire Singaporeans first. Companies also do not need to explain why they cannot hire Singaporeans. So the fair consideration framework is just that. Just consider. Now, because of the PAP's wants to make profits for themselves, this has also affected businesses. For businesses, their costs have increased because of the high rents, because of the high foreign worker levies, and because of the high costs, they make low profits. This adversely affects the businesses in Singapore, especially for the small and medium-sized businesses. So let's take a recap on four of the PAP's strategies to make profits of Singaporeans. First, the PAP monopolizes essential services and increases prices at their whims and fancies. Singaporeans have no choice but to pay the prices that the PAP mandates. Second, the PAP increases rents for businesses. The PAP does this by also being involved in real estate and earning rents through that. Third, the PAP opened the floodgates for cheap labor and because they pay migrant workers such poor wages, the wages of Singaporeans also get depressed. Finally, the PAP imposes foreign worker levies. Now as mentioned, the foreign worker levies have no effect of controlling the migrant worker population in Singapore. The net result is that the PAP is able to earn from businesses the foreign worker levies to a tune of billions of dollars. Now, so what does this mean that the PAP has its hands in all sectors of the Singapore economy? The Economist has compiled the Crony Capitalism Index and it has ranked Singapore fifth on the index. Now, what this means is that Singapore is the fifth easiest country where politically connected businessmen are most likely to prosper. So this means that if you're affiliated to the PAP, you are most likely to get richer and richer. So what about the rest of Singaporeans who are not connected to the PAP? What happens to us and our wages? Now indeed, if you look at how much the richest in Singapore are being paid, they are paid one of the highest salaries in the world. In fact, they are paid even more than any of the developed countries in the world. And what if we look at how much tax and CPF the richest in Singapore have to pay? They actually get to pay one of the lowest taxes and CPF in the world. In no other developed country does the richest in the country pay such low tax and CPF. But what if you look at the average Singaporean? How much do we earn? So the rich might earn the highest wages among the developed countries, but Singaporeans actually earn the lowest among the developed countries. And not only that, if you look at how much a low-income person has to pay into CPF and tax, he or she has to pay 37%. For a medium-income earner, he or she has to pay 38%. But what about the rich in Singapore? They only need to pay 25% of their income into tax and CPF. So what this means is that the rich in Singapore are very rich because they earn one of the highest wages in the world and the highest wages among the developed countries, but they pay one of the lowest taxes in the world and the lowest taxes in the developed countries. Where else for the rest of us Singaporeans, we earn the lowest wages among the developed countries and we pay even higher taxes and CPF than the rich. And it is no wonder why Singapore has now been ranked the most expensive place to live in the world. Because the rich are able to afford the high cost of living, they have 
pushed up the prices in Singapore. But for the rest of us Singaporeans who are still earning low wages, our purchasing power is cut down because of the increasing prices in Singapore. Now, so much so that when middle-income Singaporeans are asked, "Do we have enough money to buy what we need?" Two-thirds of us say we do. But if we need more money to buy what we want, two-thirds of Singaporeans are unable to afford anything else outside our basic needs. So what this means is that even for middle-income Singaporeans, we are only able to afford the basic necessities in life. It has gotten so bad that when compared to the rest of the world. Forty-eight percent of Singaporeans have to switch to shopping at mall discount and dollar stores. Now, this is the highest percentage as compared to any other country in the world. Now, but that's not all. If we look at the poorest thirty percent in Singapore, the poorest thirty percent are forced to spend one hundred and five percent to one hundred and fifty-one percent of their income because they simply do not earn enough, and they have to go into a debt of five percent to fifty-one percent. Now, so indeed, since 1974, the rich in Singapore has only gotten richer and richer, and for the poor in Singapore, they have seen very low increases in their incomes. Now, if you look at how much the real incomes of the bottom 90 percent have grown, it has only grown by one percent every year. However, if you look at how much the real incomes of the top 0.5 percent has grown, it has grown by more than four percent every year. Now, even among the rich, the richest five percent and the richest ten percent have seen slower growths in their income, whereas the richest one percent have seen the fastest increase in their incomes. And do you know that the Singapore Prime Minister belongs to the richest 0.1 percent in Singapore? Now, so what the PAP has created is a two-tier market, where you have a luxury market for the super-rich class of the richest fifteen percent in Singapore, and for the rest of us Singaporeans, we consume in the leftover market. We belong to the bottom class of the eighty-five percent of Singaporeans. Now, but such inequality in Singapore is disastrous. There are major adverse side effects to what inequality can do to a country. Singapore is already one of the most unequal countries in the world, and it is the most unequal country among the developed countries. So, because of the high inequality in Singapore, the level of trust among our people is the lowest among the developed countries. And because of the high inequality in Singapore, the people in Singapore have also become the most self-centered people among the developed countries. In fact, because of the high inequality in Singapore, the prisoner rate in Singapore is also the highest among the developed countries after the United States of America. Not only that, the high inequality in Singapore has also led to the highest wastage among the developed countries. Now, finally, because of the high inequality in Singapore, the social mobility in Singapore is also one of the lowest among the developed countries. Now, what this means is that if a person is born in a poor family, his or her chance of moving up the social ladder is also one of the lowest among the developed countries. He or she is most likely to remain poor for the rest of his or her life. Now, indeed, the Singapore's household debt as a percentage of GDP has grown tremendously, from forty-five percent in two thousand and five to fifty-five percent in two thousand and ten to seventy-five percent last year. In fact, debt has grown by forty-one percent. However, household income has only grown by twenty-five percent, and wages have only grown by fifteen percent. Not only that, assets has only grown by seven point eight percent, but debt has grown by a higher ten point four percent. And if you look at how much we are borrowing from our annual income, we are borrowing one hundred fifty one percent of our annual income. Now this means that Singaporeans are going into heavier and heavier debt, which is spiraling out of control. But why is this the case? This is the case because of the PAP's fixation and its wants on making profits out of Singaporeans. Because of the PAP's wants to make profits, this has reduced the purchasing power of Singaporeans, which has resulted in higher and higher debt. And because of this debt. Singaporeans have to borrow more from the banks to fund our current purchases. 
coupled with the PAP's wants to increase prices, this has increased profits for the PAP. But what of Singaporeans? Our purchasing power has decreased. Our debts have increased. Now, the PAP is supposed to be the government. The PAP is supposed to take care and protect Singaporeans. The PAP is not supposed to make profits and cut us down. Now, because of the PAP's want to make profits, not only have they corrupted the economic system in Singapore, this is also forcing Singaporeans to live more and more difficult lives. Now, so much so that we are now in a very imbalanced economy. Because of the PAP's fixation and want to increase prices so as to increase their own profits, what we are facing is an impending doom of the Singapore economy because of the PAP's lopsided objectives. Now, in fact, it has been shown that personal consumption as a percentage of GDP in Hong Kong has maintained itself at 65% since 1977. But for Singaporeans, we have seen our personal consumption dropped since 1977 and it has reached an all-time low of 35% of GDP. Now, not only that, more and more profits in Singapore are flowing out of Singaporeans into foreign businesses and the income that remains in Singapore has grown lesser and lesser. Because of the PAP's focus on foreign fueled investment, this has caused Singaporeans to become poorer and poorer. Now, so the Singapore Prime Minister can say that he wants to bring in billionaires into Singapore because even as inequality increases, this will allow more business opportunities to be created in Singapore. But as we have seen, not only has inequality worsened, the lives of Singaporeans have also worsened and the wealth in Singapore is flowing out of Singapore's hands. So what business opportunities is the Singapore Prime Minister talking about? Now, it has been shown that even though the GDP per capita in Singapore is rising faster than in Hong Kong, however, when you look at the household spending per capita, it is actually higher in Hong Kong and increasing faster in Hong Kong. The people in Hong Kong are able to spend an average of 24,000 US dollars every year. However, in Singapore, not only is our household spending per capita lower, it has also been increasing at a slower rate. Singaporeans are only able to spend 16,000 US dollars in 2012. In fact, in 2003, the people in Hong Kong are better off than Singaporeans by 20%. However, by 2012, it has grown to 50%. The people in Hong Kong are better off than Singaporeans by 50%. Even though Singapore's GDP per capita is actually higher than Hong Kong. Now what this really means is that the lower purchasing power in Singapore has resulted in lower spending. And what does this mean in the long term for Singapore? Lower economic growth. Well, so all might not be lost because the PAP has solutions, right? The PAP has introduced the Productivity and Innovation Credits. The PAP has introduced the Wage Credit Scheme. The PAP has also introduced Corporate Income Tax Rebates. However, have these schemes worked? Mr. Leung Zihian has analysed that last year, the productivity has actually dropped in Singapore, which means that the Productivity and Innovation Credit does not work. And because the wage credit scheme does not have stringent criteria, what would happen would be that instead of the wages of low-wage workers being increased, companies would increase wages of workers whose wages they want to increase in the first place and then benefit from the additional cash that the government gives back to them. So in short, the wage credit scheme does not work. And finally, if businesses are saying that the foreign worker levies and the rents are increasing costs for them, why doesn't the government then reduce the foreign worker levies and rents instead of implementing a corporate income tax rebate, which is only then creating layers and layers of problems for businesses? Now, most importantly, do you know why the PAP believes that these can be considered solutions? Well, because who benefits? The PAP owns the largest companies in Singapore. The money from the productivity and innovation credits goes into these companies. The money from the wage credit scheme goes into these companies. The corporate income tax rebate benefits 
these companies. So is it any wonder why the PAP would create schemes which would not work? Because it would actually benefit their profits. So let's look at the problems that the PAP has created once again. Because of the PAP's wants to increase their own profits, they have increased prices unilaterally by monopolizing essential services in Singapore. The PAP has also introduced foreign worker levies which add the business costs, but increase their profits. The PAP has also gone into the real estate business to increase rents and increase their profits. And so what happens to Singaporeans? Our wages are severely depressed because of the PAP's policies. But there are solutions, and Singaporeans have been talking about these solutions for a long time. However, they have fell on deaf ears because the PAP is reluctant to implement these solutions. Now let's take a quick look at these solutions. First, we need to remove foreign worker levies. By removing these foreign worker levies, the savings can be channeled towards increasing the wages of workers and Singaporeans. Second, we need to reduce rents so as to reduce business costs. The savings can then be channeled towards not only increasing wages but also increasing productivity. Third, because the wages of Singaporeans have been depressed for more than the past decade, there is a need to implement minimum wage to push up the wages of Singaporeans to increase our purchasing power as well as to match the cost of living in Singapore. This will also generate more consumption and spending in Singapore and allow the economy to grow. Finally, the government has to get out of the business of controlling prices. Also, the government has to increase subsidies for essential services such as education and health care. The prices of essential services such as these have spiraled out of control in Singapore and there's a need for the government to step in to ensure that Singaporeans are able to access and afford these essential services. Now the question is, why would the PAP not want to introduce these solutions even though they are so obvious and logical? Well, because the PAP won't be able to earn. You see, these solutions that Singaporeans have been talking about for the longest time have direct benefits for Singaporeans and that is why the PAP is reluctant. If we remove foreign worker levies, the cost savings can be channeled towards increasing the wages of workers. If we reduce rents, this will reduce business costs. If we implement minimum wage, this will ensure that Singaporeans will have enough to use. If we reduce control over prices and increase subsidies, this will benefit Singaporeans and allow Singaporeans to have a better standard of living. So you see, these solutions are the solutions that are desperately needed for Singapore. Now, if you understand it all, you will understand why the Singapore economy is in such a dangerous situation. Because the PAP has made itself the government, it is owning businesses, it has controlled unions, it has controlled our CPF, it has bought over our land at cheap rates and sold it at high prices. It has owned our public housing and sold flats at high prices. And because it also owns investment firms, Tamasic Holdings and GICs, all the money that is being earned is channeled into these investment companies and channeled back to the PAP. Now do you know why Singapore is in such a dangerous situation? It is because the PAP is in control of every aspect of the Singapore economy. Fellow Singaporeans, the Singapore economy is in danger. Because the PAP monopolizes essential services in Singapore, the PAP increases the prices of these essential services which we have to pay. The PAP is not interested in minimum wage. The PAP is not interested in allowing Singaporeans to receive higher salaries. Why? This is because this will cut down on the PAP's profits. Yet at the same time, the richest people in Singapore earn the higher salaries among the developed countries and Singaporeans earn the lowest wages among the developed countries. Yet the rich in Singapore pay lower taxes and CPF than the rest of us Singaporeans. These mean that Singapore has become a very unequal society. The effects of this is that because of the inequality in Singapore, there is less trust, more self-centeredness, and it is more difficult for the poor to move up the social ladder. 
Now Singaporeans, we have to think very carefully. Do we still want the PAP to be in government when they are operating like a business? Now if the PAP wants to operate like a business, it should get out of government and set up its own company. It should not hijack the Singapore government for its own purpose. The people's lives, Singaporeans' lives are at stake because of the PAP. The lives of Singaporeans are getting more and more difficult. We cannot let this continue. We have to stand up and we have to fight back. The PAP cannot be allowed to hijack our governments and to turn Singapore upside down. On 3rd of May, we will be holding a protest to demand for the rights of Singaporeans to fair wages and rightful employment. Singaporeans, we can no longer take this sitting down. Singapore is our country. Singapore is our home. We need to stand up and we need to protect our home, our lives, our children and their children. This 3rd of May, come join us at the protest and demand for the rights of Singaporeans to live in our country on our own terms.